morning. I've got this feeling in my bones that tells me we may be farming today. Not that we don't farm every single day, but planting and harvesting are notably more exciting. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the calm before the storm. It's like the night before Christmas, but with farming. Let's just answer the important question right out of the bat with a nice little shovel test. How wet is our soil right now? Nice shovel full usually gives you a pretty good idea of where the moisture's at in the soil. Flip it open. Obviously, right out of the gate, you see a half inch crust that's dry. Very good sign. The second thing you really want to look at is a couple inches down, how much of a ball forms when you roll it up. In this spot, in this specific field, we're getting maybe half inch balls, if that is actually kind of crumbling. That is actually an awesome sign that we possibly could be working this today. I explained this before last week when we were eyeing down some tillage before the rain. A ball like this is synonymous with compaction. If you're rolling the soil up into balls like this, when you place heavy tire weight on the ground from your big tillage tractors and tillage tools, you're going to press all that soil together and compact it. Compaction isn't going to completely derail your crop, though if you do suffer from dry conditions and your roots struggle to go in the ground, you may lose some yield. Look at that. Of course, this one sample does not represent the entirety of this 220 acre farm. This spot may be dry, why this spot 100 foot away could be a complete swamp still. We have variations in topography and soil type, as well as additional drainage infrastructure in certain areas in the field that have a big impact on how dry it's going to be. To properly hedge your estimations against this variation, you simply just go to the wettest spot in the field and see whether or not it's going to be dry enough to work. To get you all up to speed very quickly before we start things off this morning, today is the Monday after Easter Sunday. Last Wednesday, we were very close to starting field work we got a half inch of rain which pretty much pushed us back into easter weekend if not monday or tuesday where we are today as farmers we have a rough ability to look at our ground know the rainfall amounts we've had in the forecast and estimate when we think we're going to be able to get in the field I was projecting Tuesday to Wednesday. It looks like it could be Monday or Tuesday now. My dad must have been chomping at the bits because on Saturday, so two days ago, he brought the new field cultivator out to the field to set it. In all reality, I think he just wanted to see how the ground was going to work up. Two days later and six foot in the air, these two tillage passes actually look phenomenal. It's not all sunshine and roses though, and I'll show you why. If you look closely at this spot, you can see where the tractor track through here pack down that ground probably right in this area you can see actual each side of the duels and then the soil finish is very clotted even after a couple days of air drying it's not really refined meaning that he definitely worked this area a little prematurely. I say this from a place of endearment. My dad is many things. Patient is not one of them. As a matter of fact, he's about as patient as a fully loaded full speed freight train without brakes. There are some spots though where the tillage pass looked great. This is kind of what we're going for. A few small clods here and there, not a big deal. It's the big ones on the first area I showed you that we don't want. If you look deeper in the profile, not only has this broken that crust up, it's dried open that topsoil and aerated it really well. This area would actually be in prime shape for planting. Two days of the soil being able to dry and air out after a tillage pass does improve its visual appearance. It also helps the fundamental condition of the soil. We probably could not have planted any of this right behind the field cultivators because we are still a little wet. I am optimistic that after a warm and dry weekend, we may be able to actually hit the ground run full speed. That would definitely allow our field cultivators to get a head start because they're gonna be underwater all season with our planting rigs behind them. You all know what they say about apples and trees they don't fall far from each other oil check more than enough I'm sorry I've got to go do it it's like an itch you got to scratch we got to see how this ground's gonna work this is the brand new field cultivator other than working a couple of acres on Saturday hooked up to the smaller tillage horse the 9460R I'm going to venture to say that there is not enough tractor in front for this size of field cultivator. I guess we'll see when we get out to the field. Okay, gave the tractor about five minutes at 1300 RPMs to warm up. Let's get over to the field. This rig is officially unfolded and ready to turn over some dirt. First, I'm gonna play with some settings. I'm sure my dad dialed these in a little bit when he ran it the other day. First thing I noticed is that the basket probably needs to be closer to 500 pounds. 
you run a lot of downforce on a basket. Shanks being at 1.5 means it's an inch and a half in the ground. That's really not deep though. We do a lot of this finishing tillage at an inch and a half to three inches. This isn't the first time I've said this and it's far from the last. This 9460R will have its work cut out for it all season. A 52 foot field cultivator is a lot for a 460 horsepower tractor. Our bigger 9620R that's still tucked away in the machine shed set up and ready to go is pushing 160 more horsepower rated than this one. That is a lot of ponies. That's all right though, let's give this a shot. Okay, eighth gear is not overdoing it, let's do nine. That's probably closer to the top end for us. Playing with the depth of the field cultivator obviously changes how much soil you're reaching down below. What you don't consider though is that you're also reaching more moisture. Our moisture is below our top crust on the soil. The deeper you go, the more of that you're going to be in. Hopped out for a second just to give everything a quick once over. I'm sure there's no issues. That's a field cultivator. That's a very good finish where we just went. The primary thing, like I mentioned earlier, that we want to look for is that you're not seeing the tractor tracks behind. If you are, that means it's definitely too wet. Of course, big clods in the soil also indicate the same thing. That's not as big of an issue as packed ground down behind where the tractor ran. There's that weed control we get from the field cultivator, pulling out all of this hen bit. A lot of you have commented and asked, what is all of the purple weed I see in Illinois? It's hen bit that's flowering very very pretty i mean it's beautiful i almost wish it had some kind of value it doesn't it's actually a complete pest but man does it look good when it's purple and flowering across fields everything leading up to this point had nothing to do with why i actually got out i found my first souvenir of the year an old sea shank probably from an old field cultivator there's definitely some pockets out in this field that are a little bit heavy if you can't tell by what's coming out the back of the field cultivator, you can certainly recognize your four-wheel drive tractor kind of squiggling back and forth trying to get enough traction. Anyways, this is most certainly going to be my first day of planting video. For some reason, the views on these are always just completely out of the park. I greatly appreciate all of my old followers are here as well as new viewers. If you enjoy what you see, I'd love to get your feedback. And if you want to stick around for some more, definitely hit that subscribe button. We're rapidly approaching on another milestone, 40,000 followers. I'm still blown away that we've had that much success on this channel. It would definitely mean the world to me if you would all be extra generous. Hit the subscribe button as well as like the video. Leave me some feedback in the comments below. I really appreciate every single one of you tuning in and supporting the channel. Okay, okay, back to field work. We're in some of the darker soils on the field. If you look behind the field cultivator, you can see where the tractor ran, indicating that it may still be a tad bit on the wet side for this operation. Everything was going nothing to do with this rig huh that is one heck of a tile hole thought we had all these fixed what has happened right here old clay tile broken down except for not a natural phenomena we had some laterals ran across this end row on this farm you can see a trench mark there and a trench here looks like as they were pulling out of here they clipped this maybe eight to ten inch clay tile it sucked down all this dirt which is quite a bit and now we got a hole here, so that's going to need fixed as soon as possible, and we're probably going to need some fill dirt. Needless to say, we are going to work around that hole. I don't think we're going to do any good with this field cultivator if we go over the top of it. That's not a knock on the tile contractor who put the new lines in. That is one of the bad parts about all that old clay tile. You really have no idea what is under there when you're out laying new stuff. There's not very good records of some of this old stuff that was laid 50 to 100 years ago. Everything I just worked was soybean stubble that's going into corn. As the soybean planter operator, I could really care less about that. I'm going to cross over to the dark side of this lane and look at some corn stalks. Typically, corn stalks are going to be wetter than soybean stubble, regardless of soil type, because there's just so much more residue on top of the soil, holding moisture down and preventing sunlight and air from drying out the top of the soil. We are planning on tilling everything this year, corn stalks and soybean stubble alike. I'm going to see how wet this is. There's dust. That's a pretty good start. Ladies and gentlemen, we better call a field cultivator drivers because this powder keg is about to explode. My job in the field cultivator is done for the morning. There comes my Uncle Jeff to pick me up. We're going to leave this here because it's probably going to start working pretty quickly. 
That looks like my sister Katie getting her morning exercise in. She will most likely be the person operating this 9460R. Before all my regulars barrage me in the comments, I did buy her a camera. I'm going to give it to her, and it's up to her whether or not she wants to film. I can't make her do it, and I don't want to force her to. So if you have a problem with a lack of Katie content, you gotta take that up with her. Flagging a tile hole of this size is kind of like peeing in the wind. The only reason it's so big is because that when you pulled the boot up, yes. you loosened all the soil. Eight inch clay. That's a lot of water under that. Yes. Yeah. You never know with the old clay. Some of them are still working like rock stars. Other ones are yeah. on their last leg, if not completely ready to be abandoned. We've not fully developed our game plan for this morning, other than backing everything out and getting it staged and ready to go. There's the big girl finally out of the stable. 160 more rated horsepower. This thing will really cover the acres quickly. My uncle Jeff operates this. I'm gonna be operating the DB60 and 8R370. My dad runs the 1775 60 foot high speed planner with the 8310R planner tractor. I know, I know, my setup is nicer. He claims that a new planter tractor for him is next on the wish list. I'm not going to comment much on the wish list. My dad is pretty much chair of the finance committee. The boss and I ran over to that 220 acre field, evaluated the tillage. He thinks that maybe it needs another couple hours of drying on top before we start our field work, which isn't an unreasonable take, especially coming from him. He is the expert on the subject matter. While we wait, among other things, we're going to fix that tile hole. Everyone prepare your ears. I assume that there is some kind of safety measure in place that justifies that obnoxious noise in this case back home. Speaking of safety, I started my yearly safety initiative because this is the first couple days of planning. Things get a little hectic. I call this shirt, please don't run me over Marty Yellow. Draw it on, stands down. I have been ordered to sneak down and wait to see if we can possibly fix this hole without any data. We've got the backhoe here as insurance, and statistically it is likely that we will need it. This bucket's going to be a little overkill, because this is a 42-inch ditching bucket. Smooth edge should help prevent damage to the existing tile, but at the same time, it's so wide that if I accidentally grab it, we're going to need a lot of replacement. I'll do my best to document this process. With the nature of this hole, it can be kind of complicated to get it all on film. The only problem with not digging in a trench with the backhoe is it's kind of tight in here. Do you see the end of, of this? I just broke it. This is a clean end. Oh, it's broke. It's clean. Okay, what is the... The end's right here. Uh, can you get around this end on the south? No, I'm going to have to dig it out some more. Uh, exactly 24 inches. Exactly? Exactly. The bottom's already done. Where's the tile on the bottom? I peeled a little piece out. I did some of the preliminary digging. Dad's got his waterproof boots on, so he's going to stand in there and clean that out. You can see there's a lot of water running through this still. Our goal here is just to put a two-foot section of new plastic tile in, butt it up with the old clay, seal around it, and we should be good to go. Basically, we lucked out here, and the section he hit was a perfect either one- or two-foot section. This old clay tile was either one-foot tiles or two-foot tiles. One end that was exposed was perfect condition. We had to dig back six to 12 inches on the south end to get a clean, unbroken piece. We're putting this short piece of plastic in there, sealing it up, and hopefully it'll be as good as new. Phone's ringing. All things considered, this was such an easy project because there's so much soil 
that eroded through our tile that we didn't have to move any to access said broken tile. Yeah, I know, I know. They've yet to implement broken tiles into Farming Simulator. Maybe one of these days. If you're interested in a fun farming game, you need to check out American Farming by Grant Hilbert slash The Squad YouTube. It's got a lot of potential. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Since we lost so much dirt out the tile there, I'm going to go scrounge up some fill dirt from a drainage ditch I dipped out a few years ago. When in Rome, am I right? never pass up an opportunity to take down a pesky little tree. Right, this one's putting up a fight. Jeez. Said to change my angle of approach. Pleasure doing business with you, buddy. Back to your maker. It's safe to say at this point that I've gotten sidetracked. I noticed this tree was down, so I'm pushing it out of the way so we can farm this area. to mother nature you go. I came out here to pick up some fill dirt, ended up just completely wreaking havoc on nature, and I noticed something. This is the drainage ditch that I scooped out a few years back. This water is sitting at an unusual level, and you can tell by the amount of grime and bacterial activity that it's been sitting here without movement. I would say that the beavers did not place this fully grown tree here vertically, so it's not a beaver dam, although that could be back there. I'm gonna come in here and just absolutely obliterate this dirt bank because we need that water to move. It may not directly be causing any issues. Indirectly, standing water in your drainage ditch like this causes back pressure on your tile systems, reducing their drainage coefficient, basically putting pressure against the line. If there's more stuff sitting on the downhill side, it takes more force to push the water out on grade, unless the tile is above where the water is sitting. I'm estimating that that's going on, so I'm going to come in here with the backhoe. Fortunately, we have the ditching bucket on, and I'm going to dig around this tree. I'm probably not going to take it out because I don't have teeth on my bucket. And that looks above my pay grade. It's like taking your socks off after a long, hard day's work. Satisfying. Don't try and tell me I don't care about the earth. I left the tree. That's how good of a person I am. I even managed to get filter. Perfect dark filter. That's exactly what you want on top. No, no, no. Before you start asking, I'm not looking for a job. I'm happy with my full-time job here. Okay, it's probably gonna take a couple of buckets of this dirt to fill this hole in. I'm not gonna bore you with all that. Just know that that's what I'm doing. Looks like the big girl finally came out to play. I'm sure the big boss man's behind the wheel on that one trying to evaluate what the ground conditions are. Looks pretty dusty. I managed to get us some pretty quality fill dirt, though it is a little dirty. There's some sticks and roots and limbs in the bottom, as well as some sod. That's the price you pay for that good silty drainage ditch dip out dirt. There's the pass I made almost two hours ago. It's dried out, looks a lot better now. Here's the pass dad just made a couple of minutes ago. You can kind of tell where the tractor ran, but then again, it's also kind of hard to tell because you know where the tractor ran, it's gonna be in the center. Looks fairly good and it's actually coming up dry other than a few low pockets out in the field. He's working on the end rows right now, straddling the two new tile lines that were put in, working them down. They'll probably need work the second time just because there's a lot of dirt mounted up here. You guys smell that? Spring, freshly tilled soil. One of the best smells in the world. What do you say, going three inches maybe? I got set on three.
My dad was just hopping out to evaluate the condition of the soil and the depth of the tillage. Like you heard him say, he had it set on three, looked like it was working about three, which is what we're shooting for on our ground going into corn. He also commented that this end right here is working the best it ever has in terms of condition this early in the year. The reason that it's in such good shape other than these two mounds is because we installed some of that subsurface piping underneath perforated holes in the plastic pipe that allows some of that pore space water to drain out through there and basically lowers the amount of water in our soil profile. Our soils typically benefit from that kind of drying capacity. For those of you who are new here, darker prairie soils in central Illinois typically do not struggle with drought other than the odd year once every decade or so. What we normally have is excessive rainfall and moisture that keeps our dark soil saturated. If we can install some extra systems underneath to drain some of that pore space water, the water I'm referring to is held between the soil particles in all of that air space. When we can get that out of here with subsurface drainage, we can farm faster and of course, once the crops in the ground keep better air to our roots, hopefully resulting in better yields. I always get a million questions asking where I'm located at, so I'm just going to answer that question right now. We are in what I I would refer to as South Central Illinois, south of Champaign, Illinois, where the University of Illinois is, about 45 miles right along Interstate 57. I say South Central because Central Illinois is what I would refer to as God's country, some of the best farmland in the world. We're on the south side of that region. We have some ground that is dark prairie soil, though we also have a lot of southern clays sprinkled in here. They are both very productive soils if the conditions are right, but most people would choose the dark prairie soils over the southern clays. That project was a good way to kill a couple hours. Better than sitting here twiddling my thumb going crazy waiting on this ground to dry. Jeff's taking over the other field cultivator, so Katie should be showing up to run this one soon. You know things are getting serious because the conveyor has been ripped away from the grain bin, surely cleaned out, and moved over to the seed shed to load seed tenders. It won't be long, ladies and gentlemen. Sit tight and enjoy the show. We've got one more quick preparatory project we're working on. We're converting our thousand gallon gasoline tank here at the main farm to road diesel fuel as well as moving it. Traditionally, we had our road diesel back over at the red shed. My sister lives there. Her kids are in and out and around playing as well as it just being an inconvenient spot to fill up semi trucks. So we're gonna move this here should make our lives a little bit easier. And of course, we're going from 500 gallons of road diesel to 1,000. We go through quite a bit between the semis, my pickup and my dad's pickup. So should be a net positive all around. That is, of course, if we don't explode or hurt each other in the process. You want to do this in the rock? We can. Well, we can do it here or in the rock. About full? I don't know. Doesn't feel it. Stop a minute. After a short family squabble, we've decided just to leave the fuel tank where it is for now. We may still move it this summer if we decide it's a little too hectic. The real issue is that it's just going to get really congested around here, trying to fuel everything up out of one center area. We don't have a very wide open farm to work with in the first place, so obviously there may be some headaches to overcome. And Chris and Jeff are now arguing behind me about lunch today, another common topic that is heavily discussed. If there's two topics on the farm that are going to get heated, it's lunch and doing unnecessary work. Okay, that project took much less than expected because of our deviation from the original plan. I'm taking the clean out gasoline and a little bit of off-road diesel over to the farm for storage. Dad's going to take Jeff to the field cultivator. And we're going to get started turning some dirt. Probably 40 or 50 years ago, the old 45 Tony would be headed to the field to plant for the first time. Not anymore. She's retired. Same for the old 7800. She was a planting tractor many moons ago. Things change. Dad and I just dropped Jeff back off at the tractor. He's going to get started on that field. Dad and I are running to the John Deere dealership to locate some front suitcase weights for the 8R370. We thought it was a little light on the front end for that DB60 the other day. We are in one of their back parts warehouses where they keep some of the larger stuff. Got all their wheel weights and front weights over here. Unfortunately, ours are under some wheel weights and they're going to need a forklift, which is at a different place on the lot right now. So they're running to get that. We'll get these weights thrown on the back, move them home, get them on the front. You can see they got a very large assortment of stuff here. Feeder house chains, unloading augers, maybe a part off of a grain cart, air compressor. All the big stuff's back here. This actually isn't a parts guy. This is our salesman, Troy. All the parts guys are at lunch right now, so he's helping us out. They always take care of you here at Alliance Tractor. You may have to pay for it, but nothing from Deer is cheap. 
We've got a lot going on at once right now. Kind of a shotgun start. Jess running the field cultivator. Dad and I grabbed a quick lunch. I'm gonna help Chris hook up the corn seed tender right now. Then I'm gonna go help my dad with the front weights on the 8R370. Easy. Keep coming hard. Easy. Whoa. Let's see if we got that right. Okay, the corn seed tender is ready to go. Now to help dad with these front weights on this tractor. Why are you putting them down? Pick them over. I didn't have the right grip on it. Stand them up on it. All these front suitcase weights are held on by a long bolt and a strap in the middle. So they basically hold themselves together on here. They're right over 100 pounds a piece. And we should have 22 on here. So that puts us at 2,200 pounds on the front end. 20, only got 20. Only 20? And you didn't get enough weight. Yeah, never been known for being able to count. The reason we're adding this extra 800 pounds to the front is because this DB60 planner is very heavy much heavier than these two-point style planters. When I took it to the field last week and I was going down the road, it felt like I was squatting back a little bit. My front was a little light. I think for infield performance, having a well-balanced tractor is definitely crucial. So to counteract the weight of this massively overbuilt planter, we're adding a couple hundred pounds to the front. Now hopefully, that was the top one, right? Now if we can get this one to work and the bottom one. Looks like my dad got it nice and secured. Wouldn't count on it. <laughs> I've actually never worked on a set of front weights before, so I was just kind of following his lead like I do most of the well, time. Well, this, this one should keep from going this way, and this one should keep going from that way. Back on to planting stuff. We're going to go ahead and put some seed corn in the corn tender. And once Jeff gets a head start with the field cultivator, we're going to rock and roll. Couple more feet. Whoa. some quick relocating to get to this box of the cow 64 65 double pro corn it was an extremely good performer for us last year on the field across the ditch so i'm hoping on one of our better farms where it's going this year it'll be a rock star again some kind of makeshift seed tag usually it's a nice printout but the cow 64 65 rib meaning refuge in the bag bt double pro double stack corn Looks like that's all we're putting in for now. We'll consider that a warm-up box. One box of corn will plant about 125 acres or so, plus or minus depending on what population you choose. Both tanks are full. We got them as even as we could without scales. Got the graphite talc sitting on top, put a couple cupfuls in there. Our seed tenders do have scales, but our battery's dead for some reason. Either age or drained down too much. Obviously, we can hand start it and run the basic essentials, but for some reason, it's not wanting to put the hydraulics down now that we're done. Hoping that that's a battery problem and nothing else. You just wanna leave it right here? Yeah, I'm shut it off. Just shut it off, Chris. As we speak, Dad's pulling the battery out. We're gonna send Chris and my pickup to battery specialist to get a replacement. It's just easier than worrying all season about it being charged. And then once he gets that done, I'm gonna take the planter to the field, that is, and I'm gonna take his pickup. We're gonna get everything rolling. Before everyone asks why I'm not spraying today, well, I don't have the sprayer yet. It's in the shop right now getting the trade-in look-over special. I saw they were putting the floaters on it today like I requested, so it shouldn't be too long. I'm not spraying ahead of most of our corn planting, so it's not really holding us up on this end, but I do wanna get some residual down around soybean planting time on the soybeans. So definitely something we're gonna need to get our hands on. Everything else is lined up, just need that. Oh, right across the culvert. Ooh. Lucky he didn't blow a tire right there. Putting the 
planter on, we'll turn on the blower seed delivery fan. You can hear the seed rushing to every unit right now. That's step one. The blower fan pretty much runs passively the entire time. Pressure differentials determines whether or not it's going to seed to units. That's a complicated discussion that I talked about earlier on in the planting season prep. The next step is turning the vacuums on and priming the seed plates. There's the vacuums firing up. They're fully automated on these newer planters to adjust to the temperature of the oil, the conditions. So many different factors go into how hard your vacuums need to pull throughout the day. He's got seed at the units, the vacuums are running. Now he just needs to spin the plates a little bit to prime the seed plates and the delivery brush to get the seed right on the tip of the sorb, ready to go in when he puts it in the ground takes off. The plate's spinning, you can hear them and see them shaking a little bit. And now we have seed coming out the back. It looks like we're good to go. I'm doing a quick walk around before I hop into the cab to do tech guy stuff, making sure all of our depth is set correctly as well as closing wheel pressure. Those are both essential to getting a quality planning job. Typical farm dad things. My expert opinion was not expert enough. He had to get out and check for himself. I understand though, this corn planter is about to put in a very large amount of gross dollars per hour. I talked about it in a previous video. You wanna make sure everything's dialed in before you hit the ground running. Based on the display, the planter is in fact planting, but you don't want to get very far without verifying your depth. Corn, we're looking for an inch and a half to two inches in the ground. Deep enough, it? The boss has spoken, we're doing a full hop down in depth. Unlike soybeans, corn can really hurt you if you don't get it deep enough. If it starts its life too shallow in the ground, as it matures, it will not properly put brace roots down or root right in general. Like I said, the rule of thumb for corn is probably a minimum of inch and a half on our ground. If you go any shallower, it may cost you money. You just can't with this guy. I've been farming with him for 10 years now. I like to think I'm very trustworthy, but still verifies my work. Depth of down pressure to 140 pounds per unit. This is worked ground, so you really don't need that much force holding it down, except for the fact that this planter can go pretty fast, so it takes a lot of force to pull those units in the ground. One more quick depth check. Pretty close. Yep. Does it look like it's going straight? Yeah, I'd say. The planter level? Yeah. Now that's an onion bed right there, Dad. What is this, 175 years of farming? Have a gator egg. Yep, cheers to that. You've aged pretty well for 175 years. It's dusty out here. Running right around 9.2 mile an hour with plenty of power left, although we are going downhill. Target pop of 35,000 plants an acre. Running 34.9 on the monitor. 99.9% simulation. Not bad for the old tech merge. Whew, I had to sprint after dad to get his attention. His marker was not spinning because his guard had came out, somehow it bent, and it was locked up against the coulter. So it left quite a trench. Only for a hundred foot or so, so no big deal. We haven't made any additional changes other than bumping the population of the DeKalb 64, 65 from 35,000 to 36,000. We're on a very productive farm. Two years ago, it made over 260 per acre, 260 bushels per acre of corn dry. So we think we got a lot of potential out here as long as it rains. We always put our corn and soybeans in the ground assuming we have maximum yield potential. And we're gonna put everything we can to make that happen. I know, I know, we've got all this super advanced GPS equipment. Why are we still using markers? Well, have you ever heard the saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? My dad is an old doc. New tricks aren't exactly his MO. It'd be hard to argue that it isn't dry. Look at that dust. Katie's hopping the 9460R. She's actually gonna hop across the road here and work some corn stalks for me. I say for me because those will go into beans and I'm the bean planter guy. We're off and we finally figured out who's been working in the middle of the ditch. It's Katie. Katie required less instruction than Jeff, which is funny because he's been doing it for 45 years longer. I guess
guess the new stuff is just harder to learn if you're an old man. Katie's off on her own adventure. Jeff's running in the background, and there's Dad putting the in row on that field that Jeff just worked earlier today. Working about two inches in the ground. A fairly nice powder coming out on top. Corn stalks never work up as good as soybean stubble. That residual moisture from the corn residue seems to always guarantee that you're gonna get some balling on the topsoil. Not a big deal, especially after a few hours of drying. You can see this pass I made three or four hours ago. Looks great. I did set the planter out here last week. I'm hoping that maybe those beans germinated a tiny bit. Unlikely, but it would be great if that field cultivator could just send them to soybean heaven real quick So I got a nice clean slate out here I think the only person in this world who wants me to start planting today more than myself is my son Lenny He's gonna have a blast in that new planter tractor. He turned two in January So he's about two and a third years old now and man does he love farming it must just be one of those things That's in your blood. It's all family here, and it has been for a long time I said earlier Katie runs this tillage tractor. She's my sister my dad, Marty, who is the unofficial slash official boss of this operation, runs the corn planter. Jeff runs the bigger tillage tractor. That is my dad's brother or Katie and I's uncle. And then Chris usually runs the seed tender. I don't know where he is. We sent him to get a battery. I'm sure he's back now, possibly asleep somewhere. You know, the best part about being the first one in the area planning is that if the neighbors weren't squirming already thinking about spring, they sure are now. They see two field cultivators running one planter, hopefully two by the end of the day, they're gonna be chewing away at themselves. Other than dad's rose being a little crooked, everything looks great out there. Chris got us a replacement battery for the sea tender. He said it was just under 40 bucks, which is probably $40 well spent. Same exact battery we had before. The other one was just five years old. Come on, you little rascal, get started. dollar startup right here. Scales work? Oh yeah. Hello to you too, Scales. For some reason this wasn't going down after we were done filling. We're hoping it's just the battery. This is lost. Perfect. Add another thing to the crossed off section of the list. Now I'm zipping back to the corn planter because dad wants me to do some digging and verify that his row shutoffs all look like they're timed correctly. Look at that dust. The outbound side was okay. Check the inbound side real quick. There's a seed. Looks good to me because that's where it crossed over and that's where it turned on. Everything's still running smoothly. Dad and I were just discussing our game plan for this afternoon and tomorrow. I know for a fact he did not have his planter down early enough right there. You have to come out here later with a hoe and fill that in when there's a gap. More specifically, by discussing the game plan, he really was just telling me to go get him a Gatorade and some waters for his tractor. A lot going on at once here in Paradise. Jeff's working soybean stubble pretty quickly. Katie's working corn stalks a little bit slower. And Dad is going fastest of all with the corn planter. I came over here to evaluate the corn stalks. Tractor is tracking a little bit. I don't know if that's compaction for the tractor or if the field cultivator is just struggling to go as deep in the ground right behind the tractor tracks. Either way, I smell the soybean planter coming to the field. With clear skies and warm temperatures like we have today, it does not take long once you break open that crust with a field cultivator to have it dried out and ready to plant. Backing up to the green seed tender. Y'all know what that means. It's soybean time. It's a lot easier when you have a backup camera. A few hops with my overweight body gotta settle this kitchen place. No? Not quite enough. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or what. Almost forgot some. These wouldn't have gone far. Hello, old dog. And there's younger dog under the basketball hoop. Garden the farm. Chris is picking up a box of seed corn for dad's planter. I'm gonna be grabbing two boxes of seed beans for the DB60. We're gonna start with him first. Three quarters of our planting fleet is out in the field right now. The last quarter is what is near and dear to me, the soybean planter. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit antsy and anxious to get it out in the field. I know I had it out and set it the other day, but that still doesn't persuade me differently that I shouldn't be nervous. One more. Oh, 
We started with some good old DeKalb corn. Now we're making the transition to some Pioneer corn, planting a new hybrid if I can find it. It is 116 day double stack Pioneer corn. I'm looking around frantically to see if I can locate it. Okay, there's the box in question right there. 116 is pretty long season corn. We planted some 116 day channel corn last year. Didn't have any issues with it drying down in a timely manner. Our typical maturity range is 108 to 114 day, occasionally thrown in 115 day. And now we're starting to see some 116 day corn as well as salesmen pushing anything beyond that 117, 118, they have suggested it a time or two. I don't have time to do a lengthy explanation of what the day links mean. Basically 108, 116, all those numbers indicate how long it takes the corn to mature. Corn matures based on GDUs or growing degree units. It is an accumulated system of heat units. Basically you take a temperature for the day minus certain thresholds and you can calculate how many GDUs you're acquiring throughout the growing season. That's why a 108 day would technically mature faster than 115. So that's the point I'm getting at is that 116, 117 is kind of longer than we're normally growing here. Not that it's gonna be an issue, but it does go against the norm. Chris just pulled his seed tender out of the way with the one box of corn. I am now going to stage my seed tender and put two boxes of Asgrow beans. This says DeKalb corn, but you can see in this very high quality fashion, it's got a piece of painter's tape and indicates that it is not DeKalb corn, it's soybeans. DeKalb and Asgrow are actually the same brand. These are Asgrow 33 XF3s. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh. sister companies. Pioneer corn is red, Asgro beans are red, and Pioneer beans are green. I really don't know. I couldn't explain it to you. I can't really explain the phenomena, but I seem to be a better forklift driver when it's warmer outside. Beats me. I don't make the rules. I just play the game. conveyor because it's much simpler than swinging the conveyors around on the sea tenders. They are capable of self-loading, but it is a complicated job for one person, and we don't like dedicating two people to loading sea tenders, unless it's early in the season like today. This is more of an exception to the rule. I haven't hit the ground running, so it doesn't hurt for me to help Chris do this, and it's kind of a lot to ask him to do both at once. The conveyor is very convenient. If you guys still load your sea tenders with the swing away function, that's great. I do recommend you check out a conveyor like this to load your tenders. It saves you so much time and effort. We're almost ready to roll out of the seed shed. Chris and I just made a mess topping off both gas tanks. We chose a very inconvenient time to decommission our gas pump over there because that's what we use to fill all our gas tanks. Last thing I need to do is put some graphite talc in my talc dispenser. I'm gonna put an extra in the back of my truck. Still a little bit of my old talc in there that I used last season on the old planter. It didn't have the graphite in it. Shouldn't hurt anything. I'll just mix its way in there. He's a little front heavy because I put both of those boxes of beans on the front of this tender. I timed this about perfectly. Katie just called and said she finished working that 57 acre field where she's been for the last hour or so, maybe two hours. That's where I'm gonna be planting beans. By the time I get everything loaded up and down there, should be about dry and ready to go. Even if it's not ready to go, I'm gonna plant it like it is anyways. There's the big old bean planting beast. Got a few of those Pioneer 3 ones left in the tank. They are enlist beans. It's not really a big deal though because we are going to be spraying Liberty on our flex beans. I know, I know. I really already confused you guys a bunch already today. That may be the end of it. Nah, just kidding. Class is in session. You better take notes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's 
let's say we go plant some beans. I am partially loaded. I'm going to take it easy on the old DB. Alrighty, we are unfolded in plant mode, so my one SCV lever will now control the up and down. And once it's all the way down, it will bypass through and turn on the seed delivery fan. There we go. For some reason in the unfold sequence, I'm not getting everything all the way down on the middle section. Now my fan should spool up. Well, you worked perfectly fine the other day. Now you're going to be a troublemaker? Turn on. There we go. Four things need turned on, PTO, and our three VACs. We'll go over to our other screen here, and what we want to do is turn on our electric power generation system that runs off the PTO that is spinning. That will engage our row units. Much like the corn planter, the seed fan ensures that we have seed at each row unit. The vacuums will now allow us to prime our units that can be primed because power is turned on to them to spin. We'll pick it up off the ground. Tools. I'm gonna run off frame control. Also, no. I'm gonna figure out one of these days. Diagnostics, no. Okay, let's try this through the menus. We'll go menu, seed star, and somewhere in here, oh, there it is, fill. That's what we're looking for this whole time. Look at that, dumping that seat on the ground. That means we are primed and ready to race, ladies and gentlemen. Woo wee, I'm having a harder start to this than my dad did. Of course, this planter's brand new and full of different technologies than what he's running right now and what I'm used to running for the last six or seven years. We'll get it figured out one of these days. I'm gonna have to plant wide and fast to make up all the time I've wasted trying to get this thing field ready. Nice and in the ditch, that's where we like to start. Perfect. All right, we're putting our marker out and just going for it, quite frankly. 160,000 is our target pop. If I put this in the ground, it has a fast start feature. I'm going to take off. I'm gonna go a little bit and see what the depth looks like. Hopefully I only speed up from here or this is gonna be a long evening planting this 57 acres. Not even that big of a field, just a new planter blues. Looking for about an inch in the ground. Soybeans are much more forgiving for depth. We like to keep them a little shallower than corn though. That's looking like right at an inch. There should be a lot of them at the population I'm planting. It won't take long to find one in every row. That is if I'd stop knocking them out of the seed trench when I'm digging. I'm like a wild dog out here looking for a snack. Okay, now they're not showing up. There's one. Inch in the ground or so. Oh, great. Now I'm really in for it. Boss man showed up. Check a row on the right side. That's a little over an inch, maybe inch and a half, inch and a quarter. To my surprise, he pretty much approved the quality of work I'd done in the first 100 yards. The only thing we're gonna change is add a little bit of down pressure to the planter to hopefully put those row units in the ground a tiny bit more without having to adjust the depth. I'm running 200 pounds now, so if I go to 230 or 240 in the soft worked ground, should put the beans in a little deeper. Our only concern is that this lighter dirt may struggle to get moisture if we don't get a rain. We're not seeing a rain in the forecast. I'm expecting one probably in the seven to 10 day range, but in that time, these beans can be up and out of the ground if enough moisture comes up at night. So we're gonna put them in a tad bit deeper to make sure that they're not in dry dirt. The last thing you want is your beans in dry dirt. They'll never germinate. The boss is off to finish another field. He's moving quick. Now comes the next question. How do you change your downforce? Wrong direction, 220, we'll do 240. That's actually pretty easy. Back up a tiny bit to make sure we don't leave a little bit of a gap. Throw her full speed, put her in the ground, and we're off again. I planted along for a little bit. I noticed that our downforce, specifically on the right side of the planter, was underwhelming. It wasn't even 50 pounds, so I'm going to hop out and look at that. Look at how fast my dad is planting right now leaving me in the dust. You don't see anything that looks out of place over here. Something's making a hissing noise, but I don't really know what that would be. I've got some vacuum error codes coming up as well. The only thing I could think of trying off the top of my head other than restarting the tractor is maybe adding a little bit of transmission hydraulic oil in there. That definitely could be something that would hurt your performance a little bit. This side's making the same hissing noise, so I don't think that's anything to be concerned with. There's a lot going on for me right now, so it's almost impossible for me to film and drive and show you things without auto steer. This is the downforce readout while I'm going. If you notice, I have a couple of rows here and there on this top chart in the red. It says row 34 has zero pounds of downforce. 
you do not want to plant without any kind of downforce so I'm gonna have to tinker with it till I figure it out I'm having Chris bring me a little bit of high guard to see if that makes a difference but I don't see how low hydraulic oil especially if it's not even setting off alarms on the tractor would be enough to give you zero pounds on a section of the planter doesn't hurt to try it we'll cycle the power what are you beeping about what, the battery disconnect? I didn't even shut the battery disconnect off. What? I'm going to pull up the downforce screen. When I put this planter down here, you'll see all these light up. Let's try it again. There you go. I did it with the generator on. I guess that makes a difference. And still, nothing noteworthy here. All right, let's put some oil in it and see if that makes a difference. You can see the oil sight glass in there. It's actually not even that low now that the tractor's shut off and everything's pumped back into the reservoir. Might as well give it a shot. Anything else is going to be a service tax issue. Whoa! Yeah. I'm going to pull it back in her face. Okay, I topped off the oil reservoir. Like I've said a million times, probably not the issue. I'm going to start the tractor back up, mess around with it some more, see if I can get it to work. If I can't, I'm gonna have a lot of very unkind words to say off camera because they're not age appropriate. Let's try this again. Everything should be set up right. I am fairly confident that this is not going to plant correctly. You need downforce to make sure that your rows are against the ground. If they were low, I wouldn't be as concerned, but they're reading out zero. So either I don't have downforce or my sensor's not working. I'm willing to bet I just don't have it. I find it hard to believe that four or five sensors in a row could be off because each individual row has its own sensor. I'm going to give the planter the benefit of a doubt for one more pass. I'm going to plant this west end row and see if it works out the kinks. If it doesn't, it's beyond my control. I'm gonna plant this pass. If it works, great. If it doesn't, I'm gonna park it on the road and I'm gonna go watch dad plant corn. Since I shut the planter off, I have to re-prime the row units. Seed, fill, fill in progress there goes the seed let's back this up and give her a shot let's give her a shot flip over to downforce on this screen okay the right side is now showing downforce miraculously We've got two rows in the middle that are running very low maybe catching up slightly Row 17 is pushing 50 pounds right now and it's falling off. We're running 70 now. I have no idea what's going on. You have got to be yanking my chain. There's a button on the screen to turn the active downforce on. I'm not actually angry. I did the yelling for effect. And you can now see that my downforce is performing flawlessly. I don't know if that's on me or the setup guy or what, but there's so many buttons on this thing to turn things on that should just be automatically on. It's almost mind numbing. I was flicking through the menus and I was like, okay, well, this shows that it's only set at 200 pounds. I had it at 240. I click on it. There is an on and off switch right there for active downforce, which is what I was trying to have turned on. It was that simple. It just wasn't on which is just ridiculous to me. Long story short, I'm sorry, dear. Chalk that one up to operator error. May have gotten a little heated too quickly. All right, folks, now we're cooking with gas. And there's Jeff, the up all some soybean stubble across the road from me. I've got one thing out of my list for first thing in the morning, and that is adjust my marker so it actually cuts a big enough burn that I can see it. When I was planting the in-row into the sun, I could hardly even see that line. That in-row is probably all sorts of crooked. At least it's soybeans and not corn. We're just now finishing our outside passes on the field. Once I get to the end here, I'm going to check my row shutoffs that I calibrated the other day to make sure they're functioning properly. Just gonna plant a little bit and stop. This is only my first field of planting, not even 60 acres. Feels like I've already planted a thousand acres today with how this is going. I think our outside pass is right here maybe? I'm not entirely sure. I moved over closer to the end so I could see it. It's like right here. So now we dig north and south and see if we're planning on time. Not finding anything yet. I think by now we'd be to the treated red soybeans. I dug and I dug and I dug up to six or seven foot in one place. I was obviously concerned because I wasn't finding any seed. And then I came to the realization that I've made a very massive mistake. Maybe massive is a little bit of an overstatement. 
but I forgot to clear my coverage from when I came out to this farm a week ago and planted those beans earlier. So the planter is still reading those passes out here and shutting off accordingly. The good news is that we did shake one of the neighbors out of their winter slumber. Those are our two tractors running north and south. They're running in the mill over there. Only takes one person dumb enough to go to get the rest to follow. And we just happen to be the dumb ones. Myself, well, I'm extra dumb today, if you can't tell. That is my coverage map. Those passes across you see are the passes I made the other day that I forgot to erase. Looks like it's not actually gonna be that big of a deal. I can just shut my section control off over these areas, but I will have to back up here and plan over that. Told you there'd be a learning curve, not just for the planner, tractor included, because I've never planned with this thing. My old monitor would tell me that there's an existing coverage map, so I would know not to mess around. I guess it's not the end of the world, especially because I'm planting soybeans. Just have to remember to keep my section control off as I pass over these areas. I will calibrate my row shutoffs on the south end instead of the north. Let's try this again. They're off. Swing around. Should take off soon. And they're back on. I'm glad that we started a day earlier than expected. If I hadn't had all these issues, I'd probably be done with this field by now. Check the shutoffs headed out of the row. This is my cross row, so we're gonna look this way. Dig that up. Two beans right there. Usually if they're close together like that, it means it probably turned on and shot them out. Cross row. Dig our seed trench. There was one there. I don't know which row that's from. There's a little bundle right there. For the most part, heading back into plant looks all right. We'll go check the shutoff side. Dig up the cross row and start to check the outbound area. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, I think I might have been missing them. Oh yeah, I was just missing them. Couple inches makes a difference. At most, it looks like we overlapped six inches on this row. That's acceptable. I checked a few more. Looks good to go. I guess if I mess it up, I'll be out here with a hoe fixing it. It'll all be worthwhile, especially because the little boss man showed up for his first ride of the season. Thankfully, after I got all my frustrations out. Lenny, what do you think about your first tractor ride of the year? Yeah, you plan beans. Anything we mess up while you're in here is your fault. Daddy's already messed this field up a few times. Yeah. Lenny, it's been a while since you've been in a tractor. Daddy. Yeah? Yeah. Are we planting? Yeah. yeah. Should we fly the drone? Yeah. yeah, you wanna fly the drone? I think that's a pretty good idea.
Okay, drone is touched back down. It's safe and sound here in its bag. Probably not my best work. A little constrained for time and just a little flustered. Allie and Linny also left. They didn't stay that long. She said something about Linny being hungry. I think more realistically, they were probably just a little bit scared of me because I'm most likely not in the best mood. They actually waited around for me for almost an hour while I was trying to diagnose issues out here and so their time was cut short. I've been so flustered with everything that's going on around here that I haven't even had time to really talk agronomically about what I'm putting in the ground. These beans are Asgrow 33 XF3 Extinflex soybeans. Extinflex meaning they are tolerant to dicamba, glufosinate, and glyphosate. Those are just the generic names. The trade names of those herbicides are gonna be Extendamax, Liberty, and Roundup. I'm sure you've heard of a few of those. We're not gonna be using the Extendamax portion of that resistance. It's too problematic to get that herbicide applied with the more recent label restrictions. Plan on using the Liberty been very effective. We'll talk about that a little more around sprayer time. A 3-3 bean is a little bit on the early to mid-range soybean maturity for us. In our area, people typically plant a 3-0 to a 4-0. Kind of like explaining corn maturities, it is complicated. A 3-0 is a shorter season soybean, which means it matures earlier in the year. A 4-0 is later, so as the number up front gets higher, the soybeans take longer to mature. Soybeans do not grow based on accumulated heat units like corn. They grow on photo period. To put it as simple as possible, once the day length gets short enough, soybeans start to finish up their life cycle. They do the reproductive parts of their life. They batten down the hatches and eventually they're ready to harvest. Although planting date does seem to have some sort of an impact with how quickly they mature, for the most part, there's not a large amount of variation from soybeans because of when they're planted. Now, if they get planted in May versus April, yeah, you could see a week or two here or there but May versus April and corn could be a couple weeks of harvest. To try and compare it to the corn that I've already talked about, a 3-0 would be like 108 day corn here, and a 4-0 would be like 116 day corn. That's kind of the equivalent spectrum, though they aren't fully relatable because like I said, maturity on GDUs versus maturity on photo period are not the same. I'd say it's darn near time to flip the old lights on. If I can even figure out which button does that, I think it's this one. Yeah, it was that one. Tractor says we have them all on. It sure does look bright out there. Got those big LEDs on the back of the planter shining down on the row units, illuminating them nicely. There's a lot of dust flying, but with the sun setting, the moisture is quickly gonna come to the surface. I'd like to get this field finished before the topsoil gets kind of damp again. It starts to affect the closing wheel performance. No worries though, I've been kind of cooking through this field anyways. Oh, just finished the field up. I am going to put the planter down on the north end as I go across where I planted the two end rows. Because I could not see the marker very well, there were a few areas where I left a little gap. My swath control will just go in where it needs to and stitch in some beans as I head out of the field. Moisture did come up. I've already mentioned that already. It's pushing 8 o'clock, which makes this about a 14-hour day for me, and I only planted a short 60-acre field. Dad planted 220 acres and our sweet corn patch while I've been busy working on this thing. That's okay. We started a day ahead of schedule. I'm glad we did. Always grateful to be farming, even if at times it seems like I'm reaching a maximum frustration level. Pretty much just moseying our way to the end. It's probably for the best that I'm doing this anyways on the way out because I'm sure this DB60 puts more weight on the tires than it does on the row units when they're all down dispersing all of that load. You can see that tiny little sliver on the map here. That's what the planner is trying to close in. If you watch that bottom graph, you'll see the green lights mean the units are turning on and the bars mean that it's planting either at, below, or above target population. Since I've got these beans planted, I really need to be laying my residual herbicide over the top, but I don't have my sprayer. Maybe tomorrow or the next day. Okay, that's the first field of 2023 done. Shut all three vacuums down, as well as the PTO. We're ready to fold up, take it to the next field, and park it for the night. Make sure we're all the way up. We are. Oops, forgot to unlock the tongue latch. That little black brace there is the tongue latch. I keep forgetting that that exists because our old planter did not have it. It keeps the planter from folding back up when you're planting. Something to do with the draft forces on this type of planter bar design. Really, that's above my pay grade. Either way, shutting her up, folding her up, taking her down the road. I gotta get lined up just right. 
Surely there is an easier way than this. Last but not least, the old transport lift that pops the back wheels up. I wanted to hop out and see how it looked. Yep, exactly how I imagined. Pretty sick rig. If you look in the path of the closing wheel right there, that's all that moisture I was talking about. Slowly making its way to the top of the ground because the sun set. It'll leave in the morning. Wide load coming through. While Dad and I were planning away this evening, Jeff was working the soybean stubble going into corn on the west side of this lane and Katie was working the corn stalks going into soybeans on the east side of this. Meaning that once this moisture dries off in the morning, Dad and I will have some more planting to do. Hopefully tomorrow is a much more simplistic planting day for me. Dad had no issues at all. This seemed like a good enough place to leave it. I don't know. I'm all tuckered out and talked out. Normally at this point in the evening, I'm still a little talkative. It's pretty magnificent that I've got no chattiness left in me. I'm probably gonna call it quits. As always, everyone, I greatly appreciate you tuning in and continuing to support the channel. Your viewership means the world to me, especially those of you who are still here at this point in what is presumably a lengthy video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Until then, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace!